So on the 7th of October, so last Friday, um, ATAGI had put out a recommendation about vaccination boosters or the third dose of COVID-19 vaccination. And this has come about uh, in response to data showing that immune compromised patients were not responding to the vaccine as we would like. So they were not getting the protections that we would like them to get after vaccination. And identifying who those patients are has been one of the you know, greater challenges. And it has been recognized that patients with blood cancers are less likely to respond to vaccination. So their immune system is not able to mount antibodies and protect them after vaccination. And um, in terms of who exactly has the lowest or the highest chance, well, it appears patients who have an active hematological cancer or blood cancer uh, tend to have lower responses. Patients who have um, medications or treatments that limit their immune responses, so treatments directed against B cells or lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. And so that can include all types of patients, even those who don't have lymphoma or myeloma, but are receiving treatments that can attack those particular immune uh, mechanisms. And especially patients who have had a recent transplantation or cellular therapies like CAR T cell therapies. Now, the further away from treatment you are, the, the higher the chance that you're going to respond, but there are no guarantees. It's still quite early days to figure out when the best time or the most likely time people will achieve responses. So what we found is that if you get a third dose, you may increase that chance that you may respond uh, as a patient. So um, even though you do get a third dose, not everybody will respond, but it just increases that chance. So it's been very clear in the ATAGI response that even after the third dose, you still have to behave and expect that you're not immune. So you still have to continue mm -hmm. with masking, social distances and hygiene measures like we did before. So unfortunately, you're not as protected as a normal healthy individual might be. So if you do go online and look at the ATAGI um, recommendation, it specifically lists right at the top, and I think that shows why we put them right at the top, active hematological malignancies, because that group is the most vulnerable. Um, but it also has a caveat in the recommendation that if your doctor believes you to be immune compromised as, as, as much as the, the different patients listed in that box, then you should be eligible also. So you may believe that, you know, you've been treated already and so you don't have an active malignancy, but that's not necessarily the case because some uh, blood cancers treatments their impact can last quite some time. And so your immune system may have not recovered from those treatments. And so even if you don't have an active cancer at that moment, you may still be immune compromised. So it's very important for people with blood cancers to seek advice from mm -hmm. their doctors, whether it's their GP, hematologist or oncologist to identify whether they qualify or not. Some, some it's a very easy answer. Yes, I have an active malignancy or yes, I've had a transplant and a, a CAR T cell therapy recently. So it's really easy to, to qualify, but for others, it may be important to actually, um, you know, ascertain the immune response that you're likely to get and whether you should get a third uh, vaccine. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that's been evolving over time and may vary where, depending on where you live, but wherever you got your first and second doses is likely to be where you're going to be able to get your third. Um, so it's certainly not necessarily going to be in, in, in the care or under the care of your hematologist or oncologist or specialist. It, it will be in various locations. You may need um, proof to say that you're immune compromised and are, el el are eligible for that third dose. And that's something you can get from your specialist. But in general, wherever vaccines are offered, you're likely to be offered um, your third dose there. That's a very good question. So I'm going to address this in terms of the, the really easy group of patients. So the transplant and CAR T cell patients, you know, it's very well established that those patients need revaccination from scratch. So we'll be eligible for three doses after that procedure, irrespective of how many vaccine doses they had beforehand. Um, and the timing of that, again, needs to be discussed with the specialist, 
because it may depend on what kind of treatments you need after the, the transplant or the, the CAR T cell, whether your immune system is good enough or you're well enough. So that's really important. The timing is important. And it doesn't just depend on what treatments you're on in your disease, but also what's happening around in terms of COVID. So if there's a, a surge in COVID, there may be a, a greater urgency to, to vaccinate. So yeah. that's something to be discussed. As far as patients who are on active treatment, and I can think of many blood cancers that are treated with a tablet that continues for a long period of time or get maintenance therapies, that is also something to be discussed um, with your uh, specialist. There is advice out there as to when the best time might be to do it. And we at the moment don't have a way of establishing if you've responded or not. Uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, discussion or conversations on social media around serology testing or testing for antibodies, but it's, it's a very challenging area. Uh, certainly the advice from Itagi is that these tests are not done because they are not validated or not confirmed to be appropriate for patients after vaccination in, in terms of determining if they've developed antibodies or protection. So it's not recommended that these tests are done. What we will do is over time, get more data and establish the best time to vaccinate a patient who's on these treatment. And there are studies ongoing both in Australia and internationally to try and establish that. So that will come in due course. And so for the time being, we make the best of the information that we have. Um, and I would encourage you, you know, all the patients to discuss with their clinicians the best time to, to receive their booster if they're eligible. So this is a very interesting area and, and it's very hard um, to comment at the moment because of the number of patients that have been included in trials or in studies that look at responses for patients on these maintenance therapies has been very small. And it's even harder to figure out when we don't actually have a test to prove immunity um, in these patients. Is it going to be a serology test? Is it going to be T cell responses? At the moment, we're still not quite sure the best way to measure immunity in that population because the treatments they're on are specifically designed to, for lack of a better word, mess with their immune system. It's designed to stop the B cells from, from, from proliferating or multiplying. So it, it is important for us to get that data. And, uh, you know, for all the blood cancer patients out there, I would highly encourage involvement in any trials that you have access to locally that look at vaccine responses um, to try and help us establish some of those really important scientific questions that will help patients in the future in this pandemic. Because unfortunately, I think we are going to have to be living with this for quite some time. So the information that we gather now will help us down the track. And you know, the development and further strategies and further boosters to protect our patients. With, you know, with things opening up, um, you know, a lot of my patients are anxious because some yeah. understand that they may not be immune and others felt that perhaps, you know, they did the right thing and got vaccinated and ought to be immune. So all I can affirm is that you have to still behave like you're not immune. Encourage people around you in your close circles to be vaccinated and maintain protections as long and as much as possible as you can uh, to protect yourself as a patient.